Hello farmers and welcome to another episode of the harvest season. My name is Al. And my name is Cody. And we're here today to talk about farming games. Woo! Woo! Welcome back, Cody. Thank you for having me, Al. I'm excited to talk about not mobile games. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've already done the mobile game talk. Um, we did. <laughs> uh, this episode, we're going to talk about news. Uh, there's a lot of news. Um, mm -hmm. So we're just going to make it a news-focused episode, uh, partly because there's a lot of news and partly because uh, Pokemon comes out this weekend and I didn't want to record an episode at the weekend. And I didn't really <laughs> want to waste a whole bunch of time trying to figure out something to record before that. So we're going simple this mm -hmm. week. That's always fun. I mean, the next time you and I get together, I'm assuming we're going to talk about Lens Island. So it's going to be a lot less simple. So Yeah, probably, probably. Well, it depends on, on what happens between now and then. But yeah, what is it, next week it's it fair. comes out? Yeah, uh, night on the 26th, nine no, days yeah, from now. Week. So a week on Friday. That's something I will definitely have been be playing it so oh yeah i'm gonna be playing it because i'm yeah. not i'm not getting pokemon so i think I we've already had this conversation <laughs> <laughs> feign mm -hmm. ignorance again like i didn't already know that just anyway. forget about it <laughs> uh yeah so we're just we're just going to talk about a whole bunch of news but first of all cody what have you been playing i have been playing um a little bit of pikmin bloom a little bit of Pokemon Go. Uh, I just had a very exciting thing happen in Pokemon Go in that um, someone just joined my lab group and he also plays Pokemon Go and Ooh. he is from Florida. So he has all of the Florida, oh, like, nice. South America regionals. <laughs> Nice. And so he asked me when when he started playing, he was like, "Do you need any of these regionals?" And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "So we're working through the. I've already gotten my hair across, um, but he has the other three that I need, so that's really cool." Nice. Um, I also play Minecraft when I have the time. I don't. I'm not doing too much in Minecraft right now, but I was really excited um, about the update that they announced the the wild. Um, that looks really cool. And so it got me like into uh, into playing again. I just like strip mine a little bit every every few days. Um, and then notably for this podcast, I actually played the demo for Apico Ooh. recently, um, which is a beekeeping game. Yeah. And I got a little addicted to that. <laughs> so... <laughs> so um if ever you want to do an episode al uh, mm. let me know though it's still just in demo mode so i guess when it when it goes into more than just a demo yeah um, it's I would it's love to play it's that. definitely on my list to to talk mm -hmm. about at some point but yeah i think i want to at least wait till an early access maybe a full release uh, i always debate I that mean, with with the games as to what i do even the demo has so much like i still haven't i've probably put like five hours in and i still haven't yeah my, finished it so my problem is i don't like to play these games too early because i find that i tend to kind of burn myself out when i play a game and so i'm yeah. unlikely to pick it up again um so i like to play it as late as possible so i get as full an experience mm -hmm. um and, and don't that's have fair. to try and convince myself to go back and play it again later that's fair um but yeah so that's what i've been playing what have you been playing al I have also been playing some Pikmin Bloom and some Pokemon Go um, and some Animal Crossing. I've been doing my dailies in Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. Do you have a full farm yet? Uh, no. So I, I completely destroyed my island um, in the run up to the <laughs> the um, the update. Uh, I oh. turned, it in, turned it into a massive lake. Um, because I wanted to <laughs> completely start from scratch and I wanted to move my rock island and I found the easiest way to make sure I didn't accidentally leave a space that a rock can go is to just get rid of all the land. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm still building it back up from that. Um, oh my gosh. It's good fun. Uh, just a little bit of day, you know, make, building mm -hmm. it up, moving a, moving a house and moving, a, making a bridge and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. So it's going to be interesting. Um, I haven't fully decided exactly how I want it to look, but I mm -hmm. am getting there. 
Yeah, I so I haven't played that um, in a while, in like a month or so. But when I was listening to last week's or last the last episode with Kevin, and you guys were talking about Animal Crossing. Um, I think I, I agreed with him that why do they limit the number of bridges that you can build? <laughs> like, why do they limit these things? They, like, oh, they're like, oh, we increase the number of ladders you can build to 10 <laughs> ladders. And it's like, okay, but what if I just want my entire, yeah like, cliffside to be, la- like, why is that yeah, yeah. It barred is, it, from it's me? It's so pointless. Like, yeah, why do any of that? I, I don't, I don't understand mm-hmm. it. Yeah, but whatever. I don't know. So I yeah, I think know. I think that's that's about it. What I've been playing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just doing whatever I want to do before Pokemon comes out. So I'm I'm ready for that. Oh, I did some shiny hunting again in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Mm-hmm. So just uh, it's fun. Hatch myself a shiny hippopotas. Hip, hip, wow, hippo, hippopotas. hippopotas. <laughs> that so I have a shiny hippopotas that uh Rochelle actually gave me ah. so I had I knew that she liked um Applin and mm-hmm. so I that was one of my very first shiny hunts in um Shield was I wanted to breed her a shiny Applin no. specifically in the ball like the ball that she liked and everything and so I did that it took me it didn't take me that long it took me like a day or two and I told her I wanted to give it to her well, I told her that I I had a six star or six IV like uh, the what she wanted the uh, nature she wanted like all of that kind of stuff and I was like I'll just give that to you and then you can you can breed it um, and then I was like oh wait I forgot this other thing that I got for you and so she opened up her um, oh no what happened was the first one I think she knew that I was gonna try and do something slick so she traded me a shiny hippopotas for the first one. And then I had a shiny from her. And I was like, no, because I <laughs> wanted to give her the shiny. And I was like, no, wait, come back. And she just like quit out of the trade. She was like, I'm not taking that shiny back. I'm like, I don't want to give you that shiny back. I just, I actually had some shiny for you. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. That was such a, I forgot all about that. That was a great memory. But now we both have shiny hippopotas. That's great. Ooh. Yeah. So I think that's, that's about it. Um, cool. Shall we talk about some news? News. Let's get into it. So the first piece of news is uh, the Dayland Pocket Planet on Steam is uh, the pre-order page is now up. And in fact, by the time this episode comes out, we will be only one day away from it coming out on Steam. It releases on the 25th of November. Ooh. Yeah. Um. I thought it looked cute, but I'm not a fan of, like, round world games. Round world games. You mean, like, Animal Crossing? So that's, yeah, one of the Animal Crossing Wild World was a round world game, and I didn't really like that. Well, I it's mean, like, so it's like, if, I mean, the, even if the world, New if the horizon... It's just a bigger one. It's It's less pronounced in that, so I don't... It doesn't anger me as much. <laughs> I get the issue. I, I think sometimes it does. Yeah. So like when I first played Mario Galaxy, I felt really travel sick, like motion sick from it. Yes. Um, and I think it's the like going upside down and blah, 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 blah. Um, but yes. I think because Dayland is um, kind of much more slow, I don't find it Mm -hmm. an issue like you don't need to spin it and run fast you know you can walk Mm -hmm. and just and just do what you want and keep the kind of sensible perspective the whole time um Mm -hmm. so I don't tend to find didn't tend to find it that much of an issue having said that I'm probably not going to play it on PC because I've got it on Mm -hmm. Steam so okay yeah um and a reminder that if you have the original Dayland on Steam uh there's the form for filling out to get the pocket planet version for free Ooh. so i will share the link to that form in the show notes if you've not already done it although you probably should have already done it because it's been out for months mm-hmm. um more chi big stuff so we got some information that the summer in mara physical release which was part of the uh, ancora lost planet 
Kickstarter has been delayed till January. So if you've got one of the the levels that gets you the physical summary matter release, you'll you'll get that uh, a month or mm -hmm. two later. But only January, not not very far away. Yeah, I watched I watched the trailer for this. I really liked there was this, like dragonfly ship it looked like. Um I thought that was really cute. Uh again, I'm just gonna poo poo. I'm not a big fan <laughs> of like small islands. So I don't know if like they were only showing these small islands of different habitats because they're still in early creation of this game, or no, if that's I think what the that's, game's actually gonna I th look I like. I think that's the game, the style. I just I've never been a fan of that. I don't. It like it reminds me of mer like those merge games, like Merge Magic or whatever. And those, mm. I, there's just not not a big fan. I mean, like I I think that the art is really unique, and I really like that that dragonfly ship thing. But probably not for me. But that's okay. Yeah, I really like how. Um they're doing different styles of games yeah um, so they're not just doing the same thing over and over because we've got mm -hmm. dayland and we've got summer and mara and we've got ancora and they're all similar but different um mm -hmm. i really i really like that um and personally i i really really like the the concept of what they've done here um mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to to playing ancora which is currently oh. scheduled for release in july they were just confirming the timeline that that's when they're currently expecting to release. Um, although nice. I will not be surprised if it's delayed because everything is always delayed. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll see. Yeah. They call it a cute as heck exploration adventure. I agree. It is pretty cute. We have some release information for Re-Legend. Um, the... We don't have a release date yet, but they're saying that they are n coming soon. <laughs> I feel like they're very <laughs> close. Like uh, that's what it, that's what I get from their their update. Um, but they've mm -hmm. also said that they were planning on the console release being released at the same time as 1.0 on uh, PC, but they're not convinced that will definitely happen. It might come out a little bit later because it's um, being ported by another company, and you know what these things are like. So um, mm -hmm. no actual launch date yet, but soon. <laughs> Whatever that means. There are many grumpy people in the comments about <laughs> that, unfortunately. Uh, what they like. Uh, like one person's comment was literally just never do a Kickstarter again. <laughs> They're, oh, my word. They're so... I don't understand what people expect from these things, right? Like, yeah. you can get the game in early access. It's just not fully released. It's not out on consoles yet, but... I just I don't get the issue like yeah um I'm trying to say like look at some of the other stuff um yeah like they said like from our understanding your understanding continues to ignore the vocal folks demanding an update on what's going on when we've spent over a hundred dollars on it <laughs> like, oh, no. yeah I mean I, get, I still I, I, I get the annoyance because it I mean, this game does seem to have been particularly delayed. It looks like their original estimate was uh, June 2018. Um, mm -hmm. So we are three and a half years after that. So I kind mm -hmm. of get that. But also, like, from what they've said, it sounds like it's going to come out early next year. Um, mm -hmm. They haven't said that, but that's just what I'm estimating based on what I've heard from them. And so, like... I mean, I'm always... <sighs> yeah, meh. sorry, go for it. No, sorry. Yeah, I'm always like good with the, um, you know, keep pushing it off because you, I know they like you want to make the best possible game that you can. Um, so I get that, but there are some people in the Kickstarter that do not. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that 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 unicorn hamster is worth the wait. Look at it; it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, I think there is a limit. Like if if you've if you've like I, th I think especially for kickstarters like you know if something was like 10 years late that's probably too long um correct i don't yes. know what three and a half years is on that scale it feels like it's pushing it but i don't think it's like i think people are a little bit over the top um yeah around it yeah anyway it's coming soon so we'll see what happens with that uh 
a game that is out now is Grow Song of the Evertree. Um, so this was something I found a few months ago, um, and mm -hmm. it uh, is out now <laughs> on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and uh, on Steam. And it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I found it. I was, so I was looking at it, and it seems like it's a little hard to pin down, like, what you do in the game. Yeah. Um. Yes. Like, so you you can grow, You it's obviously like crafting, and you grow your own worlds, and the art style is is amazing. It gives me, um, as someone that played World of Warcraft, it made me think of, like, the Night Elf uh, architecture a lot, um, for people that have played WoW and know what that means. Um, but it's just kind of, like, everything has eyes. <laughs> Like, there's a book that has eyes, and, like, it looks at you with these, like, sultry looks, and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> um, and then, uh, the I mean, the creatures were very cute. Like, the, the creatures that you interact with are these little, mm. like, deer people. Um, and there was a building that just had a bunch of toast on it. I'm assuming it's probably, like, a bakery or something, but there just wasn't a ton of information in the trailer that I looked at. Um, yeah, but, I it's... Mean, it, it shows you Definitely a lot. Definitely unique. It, it gives you a very good idea of what the graphics look like. Um, mm -hmm. Not so much what the gameplay looks like. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, here are all of our, our assets and our world. It's like, okay, but what do you actually do? Ah, you'll find yeah. that out. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you not do in this game? <laughs> you can well, world build and craft and build towns. So, like, yeah. you, you create, like, whole other dimensions it seems like or like like worlds that you can visit in this potion thing um that also has eyes yeah and then in those worlds you can create little towns and like build little towns and stuff i don't know it was very cute though yeah yeah we'll see it's on my list of maybe games we'll see what happens mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah so that's out now um Go, go get it if you want it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Factory Town. The uh, When you listen to this, the 1.0 release will be out. Mm. It, has, it has taken quite a while, but it's it's nearly there. Uh, I think this was one of the, the first games that um, we covered. Um, trying to remember. I was going to say, I so I had thought that we y'all covered this. Um but I couldn't find it on my podcast feed. Uh, yeah, um, it was the, it was in the first, it was the sixth episode Season. we covered this on. Okay. Because I remember you liked it because of the automation capabilities. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because <laughs> yep, yep, you yep. like to automate things. So. Um, it was also and the first game I streamed on Twitch. Ooh. Was this the one that I tweeted at you? It is, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I guess for anyone else that um, it may be a, a streamer of some type, they um, had a call out. Uh, if anyone knows any YouTubers or streamers that haven't played Factory Town but might be interested in a, in a key for it, um, they were looking for a suggestion. So if you go to at Factory Town Game and you know a fr know someone that wants um, wants to play and stream it, then them up uh yeah um there was also a, a patch um but i feel like the patch doesn't really matter when the 1.0 release will be out by the time this game this episode comes out so yeah there we go if you were waiting for this game to hit 1.0 to play it now is your moment uh go go get it um it's a good go fun it. fun game if you like uh kind of town builders um and certainly a lot of automation um mm -hmm. it's not your it's not like a you know, traditional farming game or anything, but it's uh, yeah. If you like town builders, it's a it's a good one. There's a lot of uh, complicated stuff you can do to it. You can create some really great uh, complicated s setups. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a new update coming out on Ublets. Um, so when they announced their schedule for 1.0, there was a release on there called 0.9 Secret Update. 
Um, and it looks <laughs> like we've got the first information about the secret update, and that is you have roller skates. You can, you can skate around in the game. It is pretty cute um, watching the little character roll around. I think my favorite thing was that the Epic Game Store retweeted it and they tweeted um, saying something along the lines of like, this is amazing, but when did the Ooblets get their own roller skates? <laughs> yeah. And now that now that they've mentioned that, I need to see Leggy with skates. Definitely, definitely. I want to see that. So we don't have any more information about the update um, other than skating, um, but we do know it's coming uh, sometime this month in November. Mm-hmm. Um, so it may well be out by the time you hear this episode because we're recording a week early, but uh, we shall see. We'll cover that mm-hmm. all in the next episode. Well, and they also mentioned that they're um, aiming to release it on more platforms. So right now it's restricted to the Epic Game Store and Microsoft, the Xbox, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So this was in response to someone asked about the uh, Switch. They said, when mm-hmm. is it coming to Switch? And they aren't willing to kind of commit to exactly what they're doing and when they're doing. But they did say uh, that they said uh, we are we're aiming to release on more platforms once we hit 1.0, mm-hmm. um, which mm-hmm. is meant to come early next year. Um, mm-hmm. So hopefully that means we might get the Switch port uh, sometime next year. Um, that would yeah. be cool. Yeah, that's what I would want it on. Um, I haven't played it yet or anything, but I was I spent like ten minutes scrolling through their Twitter, and a lot of it was really cute. <laughs> so I want it, but um, I want it on Switch. It is very fun. Um, but yeah, I think I'd probably play it more on Switch. Um, they they replied to the Epic Game Store tweet saying, uh, "We're going to have to look into." It about the ooblets getting <laughs> so hopefully hopefully that happens fingers crossed <laughs> um epic chef is out now so yeah if you've this, been this looking game forward looks to that. So, so ridiculous <laughs> the art style is so unique um i am just blown away by people people's creativity you th- you'd think that like it's it's all been done before but yeah they just they just did it and this was another game that i was like what <laughs> what is this game because you <laughs> you farm yeah but you also run a diner yeah and you cook yeah so it's like farming but diner dash yeah well you know but you gotta farm point, your own crops for the diner but at one point he catapulted a unicorn <laughs> And then at another point, you're chase. He was riding a chocobo, and then at another point, he was riding a horse with someone else, and they were chasing someone that had stolen. I'm assuming a princess, and I'm just like, what am I watching? It's like, it's like Diner Dash, in like medieval fantasy world where everything happens, and you're just trying to run this restaurant. The princess needs to be saved, and there's <laughs> apparently no one else to do it. I mean, you know, why not? And th- those unicorns need to be catapulted. Like, why did he <laughs> catapult the? <laughs> I don't get it. I, I mean, I'm. It looks like he's catapulting it into a <laughs> blender or like a meat grinder, but maybe I'm. Over- I know yeah, that's I worse. Know. Like, is that how you make, like, burgers or something? Unicorn burgers. Oh, my gosh. Cause you, they're just uh, really... They're showing you the whole supply chain here, aren't they? <laughs> they're showing you... You have to make the food entirely from scratch. You have to b- then cook the food. And there's, like, a... There's, like, a competition where you give food... It's, like, a judging competition. Like... You give a dish to like a judge and someone else that has a monocle also judge it, like also gives a dish to the judge or maybe the monocle person is the judge. I'm not sure. (laughs) And then the judge is like, oh, this is too spicy or like, oh, this is bitter. I don't know. It was just like, what is this game? There's so much going on. Yeah. They've got me intrigued, though. Like it's I'm I'm lucky I'm poor right now. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I wanted to play. I want to play this game. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's out now so. on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Steam. So please, someone play this game and tell me what it is. It's a, it's Epic on Chef my creators. it's on my maybe list. Like so many things. Oh, Epic Chef! If if the Epic Chef creators listen to this, find me at Cody Mathis on Twitter. Uh, give me give me your game, and I will review it on this podcast. <laughs> Whoa, you're promising my podcast there. I'm a co-host. I can, <laughs> I can, you know what, make my own pun. No, I'm kidding. That's not, I'm not going to do that. You're not going to do that. It's so much work. I'm not going to do that. Don't make a podcast. <laughs> from. Trust me, it's too much work. Um, <laughs> well, there we go. Epic Chef. Go cook and put your unicorns in the meat grinder. Um... <laughs> Uh, Rune Factory 4S is coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, so it's been on Switch for a while. Um, what was it last year? Beginning of last year, mm-hmm. something like that. It came out mm-hmm. on Switch. So if you, for some reason, really wanted to play the game and you didn't want to play it on Switch and you didn't want to play it on 3DS, which is what it originally came out on, you wanted to play it on your PlayStation, your Xbox, or your PC, well, you're in luck. It releases on the 7th of December. But why is the chicken so big? Look, I mean, <laughs> there are only so many questions you can ask about these things. Okay, that's that's a big question. <laughs> the chicken is like larger than the cow. Yeah, you get anyway, you know, get it gives you more meat. I'm sure it's in the story. You got this magical. I honestly chicken. don't remember. Like, I did not enjoy that game. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Um, yes. So the other uh, big thing that happened was there was a wholesome snack um, and uh, a bunch of, of games announced and some news about them and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. did you watch through the wholesome snack? I did. So I also initially upon watching this, uh, I thought it was a game called Wholesome Snack. <laughs> so... To correct that for other interested parties, um, a wholesome like wholesome games puts out like a what is it an annual or a biannual like show where they kind of like showcase a bunch of wholesome games, um, just some real feel good games. Um, the wholesome snack is is a snack sized portion <laughs> of snack that. snack. So snack snack. So it was only like 20 minutes long uh, and it basically went over a bunch of different games. So I did watch it um, and just to briefly mention uh, the games that were in it, um, there was A Garden Witch's Life, uh, there was a game called a- Aka, there was a game called A Short Hike, another one called Trading Time A Croak Tale, one called Nyad, <laughs> one called Mail Time, where you're a mailman, uh, another one called The Spirit and the Mouse, it's like kind of like ratatouille uh <laughs> the ranch of rivershine is um the person who created lemon cake yeah um but they did barbie horse adventure instead uh <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> you you ride horses uh i'm sure there are other home. games that you ride horses that you <laughs> could have compared no that's to. the only it's the only <laughs> game that you ride horses in ever um mushy come home is a game where you're a mushroom um river tales stronger together uh is about a fish and a cat in a river it's real cute um and then the two that i picked out that that I just wanted to blurb here real quick was Paradise Marsh, uh, which picked it got my attention right away because the first three first three things you see is a dragonfly, a bee, bees, bees, and then a frog. And I was like, I'm sold. Like, <laughs> it doesn't take <laughs> much, does it? <laughs> it doesn't. And so uh, it just looks like it's. I think it's going to be similar to. Um, Oh my gosh, what is that game that we played that's on my, that's literally still on my uh, Alba. Oh, um Alba, yeah. similar to Alba in that so I don't think that there's a character that you're playing or anything but you're basically going around this marshland looking for 
these critters. And then there's like a book where you're trying to like fill in a nature journal. Um, and a couple other things that were in the nature journal that I didn't see, uh, or didn't like pop out to me were things like little beetles, Mm. um, the frog, it had like the genus and species of the frog and had some like information about the frog. And as, as someone who studies wildlife, I was like, oh my gosh, I need this game (laughs) because doing it for my job is not enough. I want to do it in my games too. Um, so that comes out on February 3rd. And then the last one, um, that was in the, in the snack was uh, little kitty, big city. And it starts off and it gets you right in the feels with a cat meowing at the screen. And you are a kitten and you are lost and you are trying to get home. And it it has big untitled goose game energy <laughs> where you're just getting into everything. Um and you're just you're just a kitten running around a city. You know, really I could cute. never I could never get into um untitled goose game. I just didn't enjoy it. So I've actually never played it. However, <laughs> however, uh, I've watched enough to get to to know that I want to play it and that it's really cute. I Just like the chaotic energy. Yeah, of I like the concept of it, but actually playing mm-hmm. it, I was just not having fun. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know why. There was just something about it. Yeah. That I was just like, Ugh, whatever. I guess it's just That's like. Fine. I'd, the puzzles seemed a bit too abstract for me. Like you had, mm. there was like a specific point where the correct way to do it was to like do a whole bunch of stuff in a row and then steal somebody's hat. And then if you steal their hat and then honk at them at the right time, then they'll fall over in the right way <laughs> to to knock open a gate for you. And you're just like, I don't know how I was meant to figure that out. Like it's so complicated. But I mean, did, that's. Did fine. you ever play? Did you ever play uh, Majora's Mask? Uh, no. No, I did not. Yeah. That reminds me of Majora's Mask a lot. Right. <laughs> like, how am I supposed to know that I'm supposed to do these things? Yeah. But yeah, uh, I think Little Kitty Big City is probably going to be a lot like that, where it's just, you just kind of get free reign of a city, and or at least that's what it looks like. So those were the games that were in the Wholesome Snack. I just, um, I just have to say... So I was watching the trailer for Paradise Marsh and I just noticed <laughs> that there's a point where you see constellations in the sky, uh, in the and stars, then, and there's a tadpole that pops up and goes, Waza! <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> this is a tadpole so... constellation using a 90s <laughs> reference. I... Waza! Wh- wh- why is the tadpole they saying Waza? <laughs> they knew. I don't understand. They were like... They were like, we we know what she wants. I don't. And we're gonna do it. I don't. I don't understand. It's like there's so much in that. That's such a weird situation. Also, the the B constellation. So that was another big thing. Is if the B constellation did not look anatomically correct, like a B, <laughs> I would have been out. It's a but constellation. It look, it's got like four it stars good. in it. It look like that constellation came up. I was like, hey. That's a bee. It's got four <laughs> wings. Big fuzzy bee. Definitely some type of bumblebee. I guess if they label the constellation like honey bee constellation, I'm gonna be like, I'm out. <laughs> so be warned, Paradise Marsh creators. I don't think they're going to get do your, that. Get your bees right. I think they'll probably Ask. call it bee. <laughs> they would be correct. It's probably it's a bumblebee for sure. But they would they would anyway. be correct. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Um, but yeah, so that's what was in the wholesome snack. Um, not all of those are, especially not the two that I mentioned. Um, <laughs> not all of them are farming games. Yeah. So there were um, two that I picked out that were that looked like farming games. At least they had some level of farming in them. So the first one is is mm-hmm. Aka. Um, mm-hmm. This seemed to have some sort of farming in it. Um, so this is a so. Uh, I'll uh, just I'll read their their blurb. Find inner peace in a small open world game. First of all, you got me on the small. I like a small mm-hmm. game. Um, on these carefully handcrafted islands, you take uh, you can take a nap on a giant monster, feed baby dragons, take care of the fl- fauna and flora, but demons from your past might come back to remind you what to remind you what you want to forget. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so I think the story is that you're this red panda who was used to be like a warrior, but you're like done with that. You're like, mm. I'm I'm too old. I've seen some stuff. It's time for me to retire. And so you retire to this place and you're like basically crafting a little a little home for yourself. Um napping on a giant capybara. And the capybara has a leaf on its head. It's so cute. This art style is so freaking cute. And, like, just, like, watching the trailer was so calming for me. And this is one bajillion percent the type of game that I would that I enjoy. Something that I could just play it and it's just calming. Um, but there are still some, some feels in there. So um, they talked about how on this island there are ghosts. And when you basically come up to the ghosts... They remind you of things that you're trying to forget so that he comes up to this one ghost and the ghost literally says, suffering made me ugly. Go away. (laughs) And like, we've all been there. We've all been, we've all been at the point in our lives where we're like, I've been through it. I just kind of need space right now. Like, I'm not fit to be seen right now. Just give me like, come back in like an hour. Mm. Let me take a nap. Um, But that. Even with those reminders of your your past, like you can still find peace and like build peace for yourself. So I I'm in. Um, yeah, I've already wish listed it. So and it has a, a gorgeous art style, and there is farming. I promise. <laughs> there is farming. It's there. Yes. I don't know how detailed it is. We've not seen a lot about it, but I have seen them growing something. So. Mm-hmm. They have a, a hole in their inventory as well. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm intrigued with this ca- capybara. Like, is it... <laughs> it's so cute. Is, is the capybara just always there sleeping? Like, is why... Is it just a Snorlax capybara? Where, yeah, like, what, what's what's the deal? Like, why is the capybara here? Is it friendly? I presume it's friendly. You wouldn't take a nap on a non-friendly capybara. It's just a loaf. It's it just... just a loaf. Oh, it doesn't always have the the leaf. Sometimes it has a like a monstera leaf on its noodle, but it doesn't. <laughs> just I don't I'm just really fascinated. I don't I want to know want, the backstory behind this capybara. Same. I need to know what's going on here. It also just looks gorgeous. Yeah, it really does. It's 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 almost it kind of reminds me of the uh the kind of watercolor style of um, Doryman Studio Seasons. Um, mm. It's kind of just, yeah, it's really nice. I mm-hmm. like it. So that's Akka. Um, the other one was a garden, a garden witch's life. I keep getting confused with that title. A garden witch's life. <laughs> a witch in the um, garden. Her life. After losing your job, you end up in a small town far away from home. As luck would have it, you get to stay in a vacant witch's house and start building your new life. Build your own garden, grow plants for your potions and spells, and build friendships with the townsfolk. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure I just saw the devil in this video. The devil? (laughs) Yeah, like literally what looked like, like kind of, you know, like the, the, um... You know, the old kind of stereotypical view of what people thought the devil looked like, like with the kind of horse's legs and horns and red. I'm pretty sure. Oh, like a, like a satyr, like a fawn, uh, but the devil. Sure. Okay. I'm intrigued by that. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, looks fun. There's uh, some fun uh, home decorating stuff. Um, looks like there's quite a lot of customization in that, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a big fluffy rabbit. The, it's it's a it's so round. <laughs> it's such a round boy. I think it needs a trim. I don't know what she was. I think that's what she was doing as she's trimming it. I think she uses the the trimmings to um spell, make spells, oh. do spells. Oh, I thought she things. was just she was just petting it. I thought. Oh, why would you have a round fluffy boy like that if you're not gonna? Just to make Uses. yourself happy. That's fair. I would be very happy with that. There are bees. I saw bees. Mm-hmm. You get bees. You like bees. I, I do like bees. Looks I like they've got some hives with bees in them. Mm-hmm. There are two hives next to each other. That strikes me as a problem. 
Is that a problem? It's as it is not a problem as long as the hives do not face the same direction. Oh. So the problem what? that you would <laughs> I'm okay, right. Sorry, sorry listeners, we're going into B B pod again. Right. <laughs> okay. Why why? So, <laughs> so like for example, um in my lab we have an apiary, so we have a, a bee a bee yard. And as long as you have two hives that are facing different directions, you're fine. Um, so what the bees do, the first time that the foragers ever leave the hive, they do these orientation flights. So they come out of the hive and they walk around on the outside of the hive a little bit. And then they do these like circles above the hive um, in ever increasing circles, um, ever increasing diameters. So that they kind of like basically orient themselves and they, they look around, they're like, okay, uh, this tree is by my hive and this building's by my hive and this is how i enter my hive um and they learn that very smart little creatures if you were to have two hives that are facing the same direction they might mistake the the hive that's next to them for their hive like presumably they would have to be pretty close together for that to be an issue right Correct. They're usually like within like four or five feet for this to be a problem. I, I love the idea that um, like you, <laughs> it's it'd be like if I accidentally went into my next door's neighbor's house just because it's right next yes. to me and it's facing the right direction, the same direction. It's really fascinating. I mean, so who of us? Who, I mean, who of us that has ever lived in an apartment complex has not either made the mistake or almost made the mistake of going into our neighbor's? <sighs> apartment thinking right. that it was ours that's fair i legitimately had someone at my old apartment complex walk into my house and we like looked at her and she was like oh my god and then she like walked out like, <laughs> this isn't my house the- yeah okay fair enough, yeah. fair enough fair enough fair enough if you're not if you're not paying and and then the problem with that is that once they get into the hive there are the guard bees oh no that will will um do you have bee up. war yeah oh, no. so if a if a I'm trying to decide how specific I want to get with this. Um, (laughs) After a bee emerges from her cell, she basically gets this perfume on her that, uh, that like tells other bees, like I belong here. Like I have the same perfume of this hive. So then if she goes into a different hive, the other bees pick up on her perfume and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't belong here. Mm -hmm. And they'll kick her out. And that it is beneficial because there are, times of the year where some bees are just lazy and they don't want to go forage and so they will like run into a hive really quick and try and steal resources um so it is it is a good thing that they have this defense that's Um, really fascinating mm -hmm. but yeah so it's fine that uh they they are facing slightly different directions the two hives see that's that's good that's all they had to do. Like a 45 degree stuff. angle out or something like that. Yep, that's fine. So I presume you, you put the hive down and you can get honey from it. Um, so, And then there seems to be like kind of weird mushroom type creatures uh, and and some crystals and you're mining and like a lava creature. It looks kind of explorationary. Exploration. Mm-hmm. Looks like there's some done. Mm-hmm. Dun- oh, my word. Uh, there's it, definitely some dungeons. It looks um, like there are some dungeon. <sighs> please keep this in. Why is that word so hard for me to say? Please keep this it in. It looks like there are some dungeons. <laughs> you did the thing. <sighs> um, I like that the... Uh, there's you can do raised bed gardening or in the ground gardening. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It also looks like she's probably cast a spell here that makes a rain cloud follow her. Yes. So yeah. You don't have to like individually water everything. You just like make a rain cloud. Yeah. And it'll just follow you. That's kind of it, it. Seems very unique. Also, there's a maractus um, making a cake <laughs> out of a cat oven. As you do. As you do. Why not? There's a little little bakery confectionery shop. I like the little office too. 
that office has some vibes that I, that's what I aspire to. Honestly, I want some, I need some more hanging plants. <laughs> and and by that, I mean any hanging plants. Anyway, I digress. Yes. Very cute game. It does look cute. It does look really nice. Um, uh, I think Not that's, out that's yet. quite it's... high up the list of, of maybe for me. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. and not quite out yet. Not 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 out yet. Uh, ne- ne- next year, sometime early access. Uh, blah blah blah, mm-hmm. etc. etc. Um, mm-hmm. and the final game. This one was not in the wholesome snack, but was something that I noticed a couple of weeks ago. Uh, which is called Sunnyside. Um, uh, bridge the gap between between traditional practices and modern influences as you find harmony in the Japanese countryside. Cultivate new experiences, build a thriving homestead, and let your relationships with the locals blossom. This game looked amazing. Um, it looks like it's like a modern Harvest Moon. Mm-hmm. Also, they they got me with the trailer. So first thing that you see in the trailer is a bird sold. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was intrigued. I was like, you you have my attention. I, I think um, it's interesting that it does seem to be very, they're going for a, a realistic art style here. Yes. Which is not something you get in farming games very often. I feel like there's a lot of things that are realistic. So like you order, <clears throat> like when you were watering in the video, it showed that you were watering and it'll show you which plants like if they've if their water requirements have been fulfilled and mm-hmm. it'll tell you how much longer they have like how many more liters of water they have available to them and that like as it decreases yeah so that seemed really realistic too um then like you order everything on your phone like it's just like they have like basically an iPhone hmm. and you order everything on your phone um and you can look, check it looks like you can look up the weather you can make notes yeah. You take pictures, um, all kinds of things on that phone that you yeah. can do. I quite like um, the the concept of like uh using kind of traditional practices but also using kind of modern technology as well. It's quite a a nice mm-hmm. balance. It's it's striking, I think. Yeah, and there was the option um when she was ordering seeds online, there was like get them now and it was going to cost more like the shipping cost quote unquote was high versus like get them tomorrow and the shipping cost was free and i was like oh my gosh it's the reality we're all living (laughs) (laughs) like like when do you want this um you have to pay if you want it sooner uh and then the building looked really i mean i did the art style just looks so so like even the cows look realistic I wonder if the plant, I guess I didn't really look at the plants that much. Mm, can't really see them there. Oh my gosh, is that cow's name Frodo? <laughs> oh my god, it is. The important stuff. Um, They had a lot of customization, um, uh, character customizations as well. They had uh, different um, skin types, different body types, uh, so that's always a plus. Having more customization is always better. Yep. Um, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. You can looks wishlist really... it on Steam, and uh, it's currently scheduled for a Q through Q, uh, Q3 release next year. It doesn't have Dunions, though. <laughs> Sharp. <laughs> uh, I think that's that's all of our news. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's a lot of news. Um, a, a lot yeah. of news for the end of the year. I guess everybody's starting to like delay their games if they were meant to come out this year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I was oh, going to no, say. We're definitely uh, not going to release in a month's time. We better delay it. I was going to say, if we're only talking about things that either just were recently released or are coming um, and I haven't, aren't getting like updates or been delayed, it's really only four things. <laughs> <laughs> maybe five yeah. things but yeah it's, yeah uh... yeah well thank you cody for for joining me for this news episode thank we... you for having me out um we managed to go a whole normal episode without talking about mobile games um <laughs> uh do, I'll expl- do we need to <laughs> uh where can people no, find no. you on the internet uh 
Um, I am on uh, Twitter at Cody Mathis, uh, C-O-D-E-Y-M-A-T-H-I-S. You can find me on Twitter at The Scottbot, or you can find the podcast on Twitter at THS Pod. You can also email us from our website, harvestseason.club, where you can also find links to uh, everything else that's important, including our Patreon, where you can get an exclusive fortnightly extra episode of the podcast where we talk about random stuff and in next week's episode of the greenhouse we talk about a mobile game <laughs> Woo! we kind of talk about a lot of uh niantic games yes yes so. it was meant to be focused around pikmin bloom but we talk about kind of niantic games in general so. i am the mobile game correspondent so i I'm, i don't mean to pigeonhole you it's not i'm not trying to do <laughs> i no, it's it's just kind of what's happened. Though Lens Island uh, is not is not a mobile game, so yet we're good. <laughs> don't don't wish this evil upon me. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me again. Thank you, listeners, of for course. listening. Um, and until next time, have, have a, a good, good harvest. Time. The Harvest Season is created by Rochelle Delaney and Al McKinley, with support from our pro farmer level patrons, Kevin and Stewart. Our art is done by Micah the Brave, and our music is done by Nick Burgess. Feel free to visit our website, harvestseason.club, for show notes and links to things we discussed in this episode. Thanks for listening! Are you there? Yeah. Hello. H- hello. <laughs> I'm confused. Hello. <laughs> I'm here. I'm, I'm I was re- just quiet because I wasn't sure if you were going to start. Um... Oh, I was waiting for you to say you were recording. Oh, I, well, I, I said I was recording before you said you were recording. Oh, I missed, so... I missed you saying that. I apologize. Right. I've been recording for 43 seconds. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Life oh, is pain. Uh, <laughs> and then you die.